Hi, I'm Nicolene Peck and I teach parenting and good communication all over the world through the lens of self-government and I have recently become a grandmother this year. In this video, I have tips for grandparents who are raising their grandchildren. In this video, we're going to be talking about the uniqueness of grandparents raising grandchildren. I know it can happen and it happens in a lot of households nowadays and what grandparents can do to make sure that they have the smoothest transition to parenthood possible. I was just speaking at a conference in Atlanta, Georgia, and a woman came to me at my booth after she heard me speak and she said, I loved what you had to say about self-government, about all these skills. I know my grandchildren need them. And she said, but the thing is, is that I'm raising them, not their parents. And will they really listen to me? Because they seem to treat me differently because I'm grandma, but actually I'm the one who's technically doing the parenting. Will this work for me? If if I'm a grandma raising my children and I said oh yes of course they will number one their principles and skills that anyone can use ever they are just adult skills that anyone can use and you can start teaching these adult skill sets to children when they're very very young even as young as two I said but it does sound like that probably the roles are a little confused in your family. That maybe your grandchildren need to understand your role in this capacity as grandparent raising a child. It does change things for you a little bit and I guess that's the bad news. The good news is though, you can develop a good role that will allow you to do the teaching that is necessary. Oftentimes grandparents are associated with the fun people, the play people. They just give us fun things to do, they love us, and they don't correct us a whole lot, right? So they're someone that we go and visit and we have a good time with. And so that's the persona of grandparent. But when a grandparent is raising a child, then they become the primary parent in the child's life, even though they are also grandparent. And what this does is it makes the grandparent have a little bit of a conflict on the inside because they wanted to be the grandparent parent, not the parent. And now that they're the parent, they have to do all of the correcting that normally the parent would do. And so they wonder if they'll be able to still be the grandparent. And I know that's difficult, but we need to think about what the child needs more than anything, more than they need the grandparent, which does help with identity. Grandparents do help the child develop identity, but the parent helps the child develop identity even more. And so you've got to have a good, strong parent role, even though you happen to be a grandparent. So years ago when I started teaching about parenting and people started asking me to teach because of the BBC documentary that was made of our family, I wrote this book called Parenting a House United. And when I wrote this book, I assumed that everyone understood family roles, but I was wrong. People started asking me questions that we're clearly pointing back to roles problems in the family. Things that insinuated husband and wife not being on the same page or children not listening to the parents or doing what they say or showing extreme amounts of disrespect. And so I ended up writing this book, Roles, The Secret to Family Business and Social Success, so that parents could see what they needed to do to fix the roles in their family. So if you are a grandparent raising your children, I highly recommend that you read the book Roles. Now, even though there aren't very many grandparents that are talked about in this book, the husband and wife in this book are taught about roles, the roles that you have in a family and you will need to take on those roles as father and mother for the child. And when I say roles, I don't just mean responsibilities, like who makes dinner and stuff, but I'm talking about who touches certain parts of the heart of the child, and those go back to your identity within the family unit. Until you get the roles straight in the family, you'll have a hard time with any other teaching. Now, speaking of teaching, I've got some things that you will want to use to help with your grandchildren. Before we talk about some of the skills that are contained in this book, click the subscribe button now because this channel is dedicated to teaching you all the things that you will need for your children and grandchildren to learn self-government and you'll learn some self-government too along the way. Click the subscribe button now and don't forget that notification bell so that you get notified when new videos come out. 
In this book, Parenting a House United, and in my TSG parenting course, I talk about how to create an environment where the whole family is self-governing. This means parents and children. Now in your case, every time I say parents, you need to be thinking about yourself as grandparent, right? So here's the thing. You probably had some things that you did raising your children that seem a little bit different now, right? Maybe they're not taken the same way. The children seem to be processing the parenting in a different light. And that's certainly the case, especially with the influence of media. Everybody is chiming in on what should be happening with parenting in general. But also then you throw in the fact that you're a grandparent and you've already done it a different way and that can be very hard. You might need to learn a few new tricks, but don't worry because they're all outlined for you in this book and in my course. If your grandchildren are older, you can even take the course with them and learn all of the skills and principles together. So let's talk a little bit about what some of those skills and principles are. There are four basic skills to self-government and they're each taught in one of these four children's books. Now, if your child, your grandchild is like a teen or something, obviously these books are gonna be uh, a little bit too young for them. So you'd probably wanna just learn the four basic skills through the TSG parenting course. And that's fine, because they're taught in there. But this makes it really fun for the children and it reinforces those good decisions and good behaviors with the children. So what are those four basic skills? Well, they are following instructions, accepting no answers and criticism, accepting consequences, and disagreeing appropriately, which is their favorite. Everyone loves to disagree appropriately because that helps them get their way more often. Now, each one of these four basic skills actually has a skill set attached to it. So what does a skill set mean? A skill set is a list of things that you do to accomplish the skill. For instance, to disagree appropriately, you look at the person, keep a calm face, voice, and body, say that you understand the other person's point of view, share your point of view, listen to what they they have to say, say okay, and then drop the subject. And here's the good news. They don't just use that skill with you, but they can use it with their friends, teachers, neighbors, all of the other people in their life. It is just a life skill. We all know adults who never learned to disagree appropriately. Well, we don't need to have that excuse for your grandchildren. They can learn that now. Also, in the TSG parenting course, I teach the skills that you will need to be a really great parent. When I say great parent, I mean calm parent because the calmness is a big part of learning self-government. So I teach how to do effective corrections for our children in ways that are calm and unifying. You should feel closer to your children during and after a correction than you even did before. And all corrections should maintain your roles in the family. If you feel like you are disconnected after a correction or someone feels like they've been bad, instead of just knowing how they need to fix for the future, then you know your tone or your structure for the correction of that problem probably could shift in a better direction. Years ago, I did treatment foster care for troubled children. What that meant was I took other people's children into my home and did therapeutic treatment care for them. That was huge. When I did that, I had to essentially become their parent too, even though I wasn't. I had to take on that role and I had to do it in a way that preserved a relationship with them so that they would want to learn more from me. And I know you want to preserve that grandma and grandpa relationship with your children. That means that the corrections need to be understanding, firm, loving, and kind, optimistic, empowering. Those are all things that can happen if you have a certain structure or system for correction that doesn't make you fall back into habits where you emotionally unload on each other. There are so many tips and tidbits that I could give you for creating the perfect self-government environment. But I think I'm just gonna send you to a class. It's a free class, a full length class called The Not So Known Secret for Parenting Success. Go to that class now and it will detail many of the components and skills that you will need to set up a self-governing home environment so that you can preserve your relationship, maintain your roles, and teach everybody self-government at the same time. Click on the link to The Not So Known Secret for Parenting Success now. I'll see you there.